Very simply, I've always liked to cut. I was cutting through layers of paint before I was cutting paper. And an artist has to ask himself what he likes to do, what he enjoys doing in the process of making, not in the thinking, but in the making. The first thing is you can only see the present in the mirror. Um, this is what you get and this is what you have um, if you look at them as mirrors. I like also in that case the double meaning of the present as in the passing of time or the present as um, an offer or a show for other people to scrutinize and look at. Um, it is also an homage to a show that Michelangelo Pistoletto did in 1961 of the same name where I think he used these mirrors for the first time but they were paintings um, with silhouettes on them. Yeah. I sort of wanted this show to be around a the theme of portrait, portraits without having real portraits. That was one inspiration. Um, Another inspiration, I wanted to get the viewer involved somehow. I also wanted to have some uh, dichotomies, uh, you know, um, opposite, opposite things talked about, like the, the, the inside, which would be the void, which would suck you in, which is where the the viewer sees his own reflection versus the the frame which is very rococo very busy so it would be like you know monochrome versus um, a lot of details um, two-dimensional versus a void that could be three-dimensional and suck you in i wanted to have all those elements in the show The central piece of the show for me would be Dream Warfare, which is to me the piece that opens a door in my body of work. It, um, it, is not, it doesn't follow the same system as the other pieces, and uh, it allows me in my own practice to go further. With Dream Warfare, um, it is a little bit more complex in a way. It's, um, it's very much about, in one sense, about mythology too, or words, the way that they're, they're meanings through time. For instance, owls were um, wise animals back in Greek times where Athena chose the owl instead of the crow to be her companion because it was wise and if people would see an owl before they would go in a battle it was good karma it was good luck and then the word moved to the medieval times where the owls was this nocturnal animal that was the companion of the witch and that was much more malefic and scary and today the owl again has more of a wise meaning to, to its own definition. So that would be that. There's a little dead frog. Um, maybe it's just sleeping. It's lying on its back. Maybe it's been just hypnotized by the owls. Um, there is also uh, some datura. Um, there is a left-hand guitar player. Um, there's another little owl that's kind of 
crazy with holding a scepter with snakes on it. So there's all those psychedelic elements to it that will come and haunt you in your dreams.